All right. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Deborah Graves, and I am uh, privileged to be leading BJC Memorial Belleville and Shiloh Hospitals. With us today are several important guests, and I would like to take a moment to recognize and thank them for their continued support of our hospitals and their work throughout the community. Governor Pritzker and Lieutenant Governor Stratton, welcome. Senator Peters, Representatives Moeller, Stewart, and Schmidt, welcome and thank you. Uh, we also have the Mayor of Belleville in attendance, Mayor Gregory, it's good to see you, and thank you all for coming. Memorial Belleville has been a bastion of health and hope and care in this area since the 1950s. We are enormously proud that whether you are coming to us as a patient, family, provider, or staff, there is always a place for you at Memorial. We do not turn anyone away. In fact, BJC Memorial cares for more than 34% of all adult Medicaid patients living in St. Clair County, more than any other provider of health services in the area. Also, 56% of St. Clair County patients receive care at BJC hospitals in both Illinois and Missouri. And we don't just serve the community, we are a part of it. Our patients are our neighbors and friends and often our own families. And this is definitely a BJC region as more than 9,000 of our 44,000 BJC employees live here in our community. Governor, thank you for including us in your conference today as we jointly support insurance reform legislation, which is an incredibly important effort to make it easier to take care of our patients and the people we serve. Please join me in welcoming the Honorable Governor J.B. Pritzker. Well, thank you very much, President Graves, and, um, and good morning to everyone. Uh, really thrilled to be here uh, at Memorial and, and to be welcomed by really some of the great providers uh, from this area. And, uh, you know, we are here today to highlight our efforts to uh, curb predatory insurance practices and empower patients and their doctors with the prospect of passing the Health Care Protection Act in Illinois, a, a bill that will help us make real change in a positive way for doctors and patients. Uh, I'm joined today, uh, as you can see, by our great Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton, uh, Belleville Mayor Patty Gregory, um, Memorial Hospital President Deborah Graves, who we just spoke, Senator Robert Peters, Representative Anna Muller, uh, and Katie Stewart, and Kevin Schmidt. Uh, Memorial Hospital's Dr. Jennifer Neville, uh, Executive Director, Integrated Care, Jan Ernest, and Illinois H Hospital Health and Hospital Association President uh, and CEO, A.J. Wilhelmy. Um, those are, it's a mouthful, but the, these are the powerhouses that are helping us make possible the Health Care Protection Act. Last week, the uh, Illinois House passed the Health Care Protection Act, whose purpose is to make quality care easier to access for patients uh, across Illinois and to increase accountability by insurance companies. For far too long, insurance companies and not doctors have been free to determine what treatment options patients should have and how quickly they can receive it. With this bill, we're putting power back in the hands of doctors and patients. The HPA starts out with a focus on utilization management. Too many patients get hit with an unexpected roadblock when they're forced to wait a long time for permission from their insurance provider before they can receive care, all the while dreading the possibility, and it is a real possibility, that their request will be denied altogether. Too often, utilization management results in a denial of coverage because insurance companies simply want to boost profits. It's an unhealthy and an unfair system for patients. Utilization management comes in many forms, but it's seen most prominently in what's called prior authorization and step therapy. Prior authorization forces consumers to get approval from their insurance company before beginning treatment, even after their doctor has deemed the treatment medically necessary. And with step therapy, insurance providers can require patients to try and fail uh, uh, often with a less effective treatment 
uh, and medications first before they get the actual care recommended by their doctor. There's no question that medical professionals are better suited to make recommendations about treatment than insurance company employees. So with this bill, we're requiring insurance companies to use the same treatment criteria to determine medical necessity that doctors do. That way, patients can get what they need. And we're banning step therapy in Illinois for fully insured and Medicaid plans. The Health Care Protection Act will also make Illinois the first state to ban prior authorization when it comes to inpatient hospital setting mental health care. Because those in crisis should never be forced to navigate difficult insurance policies, especially during those crises. When shopping for health care coverage, it's important that insurance companies be transparent about prior authorization so consumers can make informed decisions when purchasing coverage. That's why HPA requires that insurance companies publicly post every treatment that requires prior authorization. We're protecting consumers further by prohibiting insurance companies from selling junk insurance plans, which don't even meet the minimum standards of the Affordable Care Act. By doing so, we're joining a growing number of states, 12 so far, and it's time for Illinois to join them. The second focus of the Health Care Protection Act is on improving network adequacy. We're setting a standard for care availability, including appointment times and in-network doctors. We often see problems with in-network directories and their listed availability. When a patient goes to look for a provider, the list may show doctors and specialists who no longer accept new patients or aren't any longer in the network or sometimes don't even exist. These ghost networks make it even harder for patients to locate care nearby without waiting weeks or months for an appointment. To combat this problem, our bill requires that insurance companies regularly update their provider directories to show the true availability of health care providers. And finally, with this bill, we're continuing our efforts to prevent insurance companies from gouging their customers by unfairly hiking up their rates. Last year, my partners in the General Assembly and I ended these unfair rate increases for individual policyholders and the small group insurance market. HPA requires the same for large group insurance carriers. The Health Care Protection Act is a set of consumer-focused health insurance reforms that will return a sense of autonomy and control to patients and their doctors. We're protecting Illinois families, making it easier and less labyrinthian to navigate the world of healthcare and insurance. I also want to shout out to uh, my partners in this fight. This bill's two outstanding leaders, sponsors, Senator Robert Peters and Representative Anna Muller, are working incredibly hard to advocate for Illinois families, and I am so grateful for their leadership. When I delivered my budget address in February, I told everybody that I'd put my shoulder to the wheel to get this done, and I meant it. That's why I'm here traveling to not only Belleville, but communities across the state to tell Illinoisans about this legislation. This morning, Belleville and later today in Peoria and at other cities throughout the week, we're talking with doctors and patients and consumers with one message. This bill will save lives and lower health care costs for millions of Illinoisans. Together, we will get this bill through the Senate and land it on my desk where I'll proudly sign it because the people of Illinois deserve reliable and safe access to the quality care they deserve. With that, I'm proud to introduce the bill's sponsor in the House who did an outstanding job on the House floor just the other day as, the, as she was getting grilled by the other legislators. <laughs> and got an amazing vote for it, I think 81 votes in favor, which is a a, a bipartisan vote, I might add, and that's our great representative, Anna Muller. Anna? Good morning, thank you. Um, It has uh, truly been an honor to be the sponsor of this bill in the House. Uh, This 
this is uh, this came um, from this isn't an initiative of Governor Pritzker, and I don't think we would be where we're at if it were not for his strong, tenacious leadership um, in championing this issue. And I'm just very grateful to be part of this effort that's so important to our state. Um, I want to thank Governor Pritzker and uh, Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton. Um, great to see my colleagues. Uh, Representative Stewart and Representative Schmidt here today um, who have supported this bill as well and were yes votes um, last Thursday. And I also want to thank um, BJC, BJC Memorial for hosting us and, and all of the doctors and nurses and your, and your healthcare professionals who take care of uh, the people in this area. Uh, truly grateful. Um, I, the governor gave a, a, a really great overview on this legislation, so I'm not going to uh, repeat all of the details, um, but we were very delighted to pass this bill, the Health Care Protection Act, in the House uh, this past Thursday, and to pass it in a bipartisan fashion. Um, I think it speaks to the importance um, of and the, the way that this bill was crafted, that we were able to pass it uh, with um, some of our Republican colleagues in support. The, the, the journey of this bill started, um, as Governor Pritzker mentioned, during his State of the State, but the legislative process started uh, a, a couple months ago when it was introduced in the House Human Services Committee, uh, where I chair. And um, during that um, introduction, we held a subject matter hearing where we introduced uh, doctors, patients, and advocates to talk about their experiences uh, navigating the insurance uh, system and accessing care. And we heard heartbreaking stories um, from both uh, doctors and patients about um, tragic situations because of insurance policies and rules that were in place that denied access to care. Uh, we heard from a doctor who works in an emergency room and often sees patients with mental health crises having to uh, navigate the prior authorization process only to see uh, patients denied um, immediate access to inpatient mental health care. And, and knowing that this person who's in the middle of a crisis has been denied care and, and not knowing what's going to happen to this person um, uh, because of the insurance rules around prior authorization. Uh, we also heard from a patient who, um, a young man who bought one of these short-term junk policies, um, thinking that he was getting a deal, um, found out after he had purchased the policy he was diagnosed with MS. Um, because of the uh, nature of these policies, he was told that that was a pre-existing condition that he had had, even though it had been undiagnosed, and unfortunately, the insurance was not going to pay for his care. Uh, these were real stories that we heard from real people. The Health Care Protection Act bans both of those practices. It bans prior authorization uh, for inpatient mental health crises. It bans uh, these junk policies that are really just financial scams. Um, and I'm amongst all of the other great things that um, Governor Pritzker um, mentioned. So we are affecting real people's lives with this legislation. And um, again, I'm just so happy that we are able to get it through the House. I know we're going to get it through the Senate. We have an incredible <laughs> champion um, who's here. Um, he, we're going to have a wager on if the percentage of Republican votes are the same in the Senate as they were in the House. Um, but I know that he will. And um, again, thank you for all that you do uh, for patients in Illinois. And it's just an honor to be with you and, and talk about this bill today. Thank you. And, I, and, it, and it is my pleasure and honor to um, introduce and welcome up to the podium uh, Representative Robert Peters. I mean, Senator Robert Peters. <laughs> Yeah, no pressure, and I'm now uh, a representative. Um, co -equal yeah, co-equal, co-equal. I just got to also be co-equal in how I do in moving this bill. Um, I'm State Senator Robert Peters of the 13th District in Illinois. Uh, let me first just say amazing work by the sponsor of the House, Rep. Moeller, and members of the House, and the advocates for getting this bipartisan bill out of the House chamber. We are one step closer to bringing comfort and dignity to healthcare patients all over the state. 
I would just say, look, I'm no stranger to this healthcare system. I was born hard of hearing. I've had multiple surgeries throughout my life. I've struggled with mental health issues. I've seen these struggles with my family and, and friends. And in my 20s, I've lost both my parents three years apart, one to cancer and one to alcohol abuse and mental health issues. Like so many constituents, I know the anxiety and fear that comes with navigating our healthcare system, especially right now, as my wife and I are looking to have children in the near future and are doing fertility treatments. It is hard enough trying to navigate the day in and day out of life, whether that is taking care of friends and family and taking care of work and home chores. It is understandable that a bunch of healthcare papers and policies can add even more anxiety to your life. I have a unique district, a little bit far away from my district. It stretches from downtown Chicago through the south side to the Indiana border. It is home to large health systems, a public health system, safety net hospitals, and is also home to people who live across spectrums, particularly when it comes to race, class, and gender. But the one thing that is nearly universal is people who have felt pain when it comes to their health insurance. What we are doing here is fighting for you, the everyday Illinoisan, who wants to make sure their loved one or even themselves is receiving the best care possible that when your doctor recommends a treatment, that is the treatment that you get. That when your child is facing a mental health crisis, they get a hospital bed that is filled with love, safety, and comfort. That finding a provider or a plan isn't a guessing game for you and your well-being and your wallet. That you aren't fooled by predatory companies masquerading their financial scams as insurance plans. This bipartisan bill is in the Senate and I have uh, no pressure to get this done. <laughs> and we know that big time insurance companies are gonna do whatever they can to fight back against, against this bill. They're gonna throw out everything, every scare tactic, throw the kitchen sink. We want, I wanna make it clear that the door is open for both advocates as well as opposition to be able to give input on a remarkable bipartisan bill. We are gonna bring the people of Illinois with us to the negotiating table. We will get this done, and we'll continue to make Illinois a healthier and safer place. And I'll end on this. I just want to thank the governor. Uh, I'm honored to sponsor this bill, but I know I'm not alone on this work. So many leaders and colleagues have worked tirelessly and personally to change and improve health care outcomes in the state. And when we get this done, it will have been all of us who have been committed to our constituents and ensuring they have the best care possible. Thank you. And next up, I'm proud to introduce Representative Katie Stewart. Thank you. Thank you, uh, and thank you everyone for being here. I especially, I wanna thank the, our, our governor and our fabulous lieutenant governor. Um, I very much appreciate that you decided to start your, your tour of talking about this bill uh, here in our area. We're not quite in my district, but we're very, very close. Uh, so I'm very, very proud to be here, and I know that I have many of your patients and your doctors from the BJC system and our other wonderful health systems uh, that do reside in my district. Uh, I, this legislation like this is so important when we talk to people every day, we talk to doctors and we talk to patients and you constantly hear the story of doing that waiting game. I have doctor's offices that tell me that they've hired an, an entire staff person, an entire full-time person to just fight these prior authorization fights and to make sure that their patients can actually get the treatments that the doctors know are the right ones. I've gone through it myself, went through it with my young daughter when she was diagnosed with some hearing loss and we were very worried um, about getting that care uh, and making sure she was taken care of. And the idea that we were going to have to fight an insurance system uh, to make sure that she could get that help was very frustrating to me. Um, so I really want to thank the BJC system. You are really making efforts to meet your patients where they are, uh, your expansion of services on both sides of the river, but especially making sure that you're over here on the Illinois side. I can't tell you how much that's appreciated, uh, but we have to make sure that the barriers of dealing with insurance are also out of the way. You're taking care of those transportation barriers and access barriers, uh, but our insurance companies absolutely have to cover it. Uh, Senator Peters, I have full faith that you will live up uh, to the bar that our wonderful Representative Mueller uh, set for you. Uh, and Rep Mueller, I have to thank you and commend you for your fabulous work in the House uh, last week. Uh, it was very impressive. Uh, and it is my honor to now introduce Dr. Jennifer Neville to also speak to you.
Thank you very much for the opportunity to share my experiences as a doctor and how I see utilization management impacting the work we do to care for our patients. In my practice, I frequently treat women with significant osteoporosis who are at an increased risk of fracture. In these cases, the typical first-line therapy is not appropriate for treatment. And so I diagnose what is considered to be a higher tiered medication. This is the right decision for my patient, but often this prescription is initially denied by the insurer. It is only after an appeals process and the patient is referred to a specialist, adding cost and time delays, that the medication I originally prescribed is ultimately approved. Unfortunately, this process is the norm. I spend an inordinate amount of time and resources fighting with the insurers to get the patients the care they need. This is time that is taken away from my clinical practice and limits my time with my patients and their availability to see me. In the end, the patients get the treatment they need, but it is delayed at a higher cost and has added another physician to the medical team. Insurance step therapy plans can also lag behind the clinical data. So even as certain drugs are found to have benefits for conditions other than the ones originally intended, insurers will instead require clinicians to use lower tier drugs that are not as effective because their data hasn't yet caught up to the new treatment options. Again, there are usually ways we can fight through the restrictions to get the patients the care they need, but it comes at a cost. To the sick who have to wait for the right medication, to the nurses and doctors who spend hours and hours working through red tape instead of treating patients, and to the healthcare system itself, which is bogged down by unnecessary delays and costs. As a physician, I am in total support of the Healthcare Protection Act, and I call on the Illinois Senate to pass this bill as quickly as possible. We can't afford to wait. Thank you. I am pleased to now welcome a Representative Kevin Schmidt. <laughs> I'll keep it short here. So I'm one of the, uh, the bipartisan ones that crossed over. Um, so I've been a state rep for about a year and a half now. My district surrounds this area almost 360 degrees, but where we're at now is not my district. So all the surrounding area on uh, west, south, east, north is my district. Um, what I've also been is a chiropractor since 2006. And when I became a chiropractor, I swore to oath to do what's best for the patients. Well, this is what's best for the patients, and that's why I voted yes. Tried to convince some of my colleagues to vote yes. We got, we got some on there. Um, thank you, Representative. Thank you, Governor. Um, this is what we've needed for a long time, and it will help people. So thank you. Sorry, I'm new. Um, Jan Ernest is next. Well, good morning, and I'm a system executive director at BJC, and part of my role is working with the clinical teams to obtain authorizations from insurers for the services that are recommended by the physician, as you've heard a little bit about. This idea of utilize, utilization management primarily focuses on evaluating and managing the utilization of healthcare and the associated costs, things like medications that you've heard about, procedures, after hospital care, other types of treatments. It really aims to ensure that the services provided are medically necessary and aligned with established guidelines. But there has to be more focus on how long these authorizations take, as you've heard a little bit about and also how the determinations of medical necessity are made. Is that going to be by a computer algorithm developed by the insurance company that doesn't take into account the individual patient characteristics, as Dr. Neville mentioned, or by an insurance clinician who doesn't even specialize in the type of care being reviewed? Again, as you heard from Dr. Neville, while our providers use evidence-based guidelines and consider individual characteristics of their patients to guide their care plan, they often find disagreement from the insurer, which limits access. And our nurses and doctors spend thousands of hours annually, that is not an exaggeration, time they could be spending with patient care. They spend those hours appealing and justifying what they know to be the best possible treatments against an insurance process designed toward the least expensive options rather than what best meets patient needs. And that delays and compromises care. All of these delays and denials put excessive burdens on the patients, as some of you 
attested to, and their loved ones who are already dealing with the stress of an illness or injury and now are put in the place of them also negotiating care with their insurance companies to act, get access to the treatments and medications their doctors told them that they need. This occurs in all phases of the healthcare system. Maybe your care, maybe your parents, maybe your spouses, maybe your child. A loved one is gonna face this at some point if you haven't already. At BJC, we are committed to provide equitable, accessible, and state-of-the-art care to the communities we serve. So we wanna thank you, Governor Pritzker. We wanna thank all of the representatives and senators and distinguished people here today for the legislation that you're passing to rein in utilization management and restore decision making to patients and their care teams. I would now like to uh, introduce and hand off to A.J. Wilhelmy, President of the Illinois Hospital Association. Thank you. thank you very much, Jan, and thank you, Governor Pritzker, for the opportunity to join you today and this week. Um, and really just want to echo what you've already heard. Thank you for your extraordinary leadership on this very important issue. I'd also like to thank Deb Graves uh, and her team here at Belleville Memorial Hospital and thank them for hosting us this morning. Uh, A.J. Wilhelmy with the Illinois Health and Hospital Association and on behalf of our 211 hospital members, I really do applaud the efforts of Governor Pritzker and his administration as well as the tremendous leadership of Representative Moeller and Senator Peters and you got this, I know you do, <laughs> uh, for advancing this important legislation on behalf of Illinois patients and their families. You know, we saw a significant bipartisan majority in the House last week vote in favor of these reforms, and we're all very optimistic the legislation will receive similar support in the Illinois Senate. And that's because of what you've heard already today. This bill addresses the tactics of insurance companies, like prior authorization, that deny and delay necessary health care to Illinois patients. You know, for years at IHA, we've heard from our member hospitals that prior authorization delays and denials are a top challenge in delivering timely and appropriate health care, especially when it comes to critically important mental health services. And that's why IHA has welcomed the opportunity to work with the Pritzker administration on this important proposal that would prohibit prior authorizations for inpatient mental health admissions for the first 72 hours and thereby ensure patients receive the specialized mental health services that they need and frankly deserve. Uh, the hospital community also supports provisions in House Bill 30, or excuse me, 5395 that would ensure healthcare professionals are the ones making the final decisions when it comes to their patients' medical care, not insurance bureaucrats. Practices that allow an insurance company to override a physician's judgment, these are cost control strategies that benefit the insurance company's bottom line at the expense of the patient. So this proposal places patients before profits by ensuring healthcare decisions are made by healthcare providers with one goal in mind, to advance better patient care and ultimately better health outcomes. Finally, we support provisions in this legislation targeting ghost networks, as the governor said, so that patients have access to an accurate, updated list of healthcare providers in their health plans network. Ghost networks can compromise quality care, contribute to inappropriate treatment, and force patients to find alternative providers. Governor, as you said in your State of the State address, we must put the power back into the hands of patients and their doctors, and this proposal begins the process of doing just that. So on behalf of our member hospitals, their healthcare workers, and the patients they are privileged to serve, IHA applauds the governor and the bill sponsors for moving forward with House Bill 5395. This bill will empower Illinois' healthcare community to deliver the best possible care for their patients. And so now it's my pleasure to introduce the Lieutenant Governor, Juliana Stratton. Good morning, everyone. I am Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton. Thank you for joining us. Representative Stewart, Representative Schmidt, President Graves, and of course, Mayor Gregory. It's so great to be back in the Metro East region. I'd like to start by thanking Governor Pritzker for continuing to prove that strong leadership doesn't have to sacrifice compassion. I also want to thank Representative Mueller and Senator Peters uh, for fiercely leading the charge to advance this important, life-changing, and bipartisan bill through the General Assembly. Though America is struggling with division, we are united by at least one thing, a collective fear 
about the skyrocketing cost of health care. In 2022, a little more than 65% of Americans reported having private health insurance coverage. But having insurance doesn't guarantee that that coverage will, in fact, cover you when you need it the most. Due to loopholes, sneaky coding, and sometimes plain bad acting, it's hard to find many people who feel confident that their insurance provider has their best interest at heart. The work we're uplifting today marks the beginning of a new narrative in Illinois. The Healthcare Consumer Access and Protection Act interrupts the status quo of predatory practices and instead returns power to patients and their doctors. This is not just a matter of access though, it's also a matter of equity. A 2022 study of cancer patients found that black patients were three times more likely to have been denied health insurance because of their diagnosis than white patients. We cannot allow any system to function in a way that deliberately leaves people out, and I'm grateful for those from the IHA, IHA BJC system, and the dedicated health professionals in this room who are standing with us in this fight. Every single person deserves care without adding stress about whether or not a faceless analyst at an insurance company will deem their doctor's prescribed treatment as necessary. Let it be known that Illinois doesn't give up. We hear our people's pain and we see the gaps that allow the pain to persist and we'll do everything in our power to provide relief. We are quite literally laying down the law with private providers, and I'm beyond proud to be a part of an administration that values humanity and health over profit. Senator Peters, let's get it done. <laughs> Thank you again for being here. With that, I'm going to pass it back over to the governor to answer questions from the media. Governor. <laughs> Maybe we should make Senator Peters answer all the questions. He, all the pressure, all the pressure. No, we're all working together, Senator. So i um, happy to take any questions from members of the media. Yes, sir. Just last about the Senate. I, I don't know that you can get it through the Senate without the approval of the insurance chair, Napoleon Harris. An insurance industry has invested a lot in his political career. Uh, in fact, no other industry has given more to his campaigns than insurance has. How do you uh, convince him that he should put your political agenda before that of his and his allies. Well, let's be clear. First, that Senator Harris fights hard for the people of his district, and we share a lot in common in terms of wanting to lift up particularly patients and those who may be suffering. Uh, and I've talked to him about this bill. Uh, he understands and believes that there are um, important advances that need to be made. So I'm uh, anticipating actually his support for this bill. I'm hopeful that uh, the people that are on the committee or on the committees that will consider this all understand that um, this is something that is very popular. It's something that's very important for the future of healthcare in the state of Illinois uh, and that it will pass one way or the other. And I've said, I'm not gonna give up on this. We're I'm putting shoulder to the wheel. I don't think we're gonna have to go into another session in order to get this done. I actually think there's great momentum for this. And as we've seen, there's bipartisanship too. And I'm very pleased about that. You seem convinced that patients and consumers are getting a, a raw deal. There was a time when you thought the government might offer a better path and compete with private industry. Have you given up on the public option? Well, remember what the public option was about, the idea of the public option, right? The idea is that um, we could allow people who otherwise couldn't afford an insurance policy to be able to buy into a Medicaid-like program uh, at a lower cost, right? That's the whole idea of it. The challenge, and you're hearkening back to something I talked about in my campaign when I ran in 2018, um, the challenge is that we've seen some other states attempt to implement that and it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked the way it was intended. Uh, and rather than experiment with something that might end up costing the state more than we anticipate, in a state where, frankly, we've been working hard to balance our budgets, to get them in line, and in my first several years, as you know, more challenging than, than ever, 
Uh, but we're in, on a good trajectory now, and very importantly, we've expanded health care coverage in Illinois to hundreds of thousands more people as a result of the work that we've done with our Medicaid office. So um, haven't given up on universal health care. I believe in universal health care. We just need to get there in different ways now. insurance costs won't go up. That's what the industry is going to say, is that this is going to make their costs go up. I know they'll say that. I, I will say that, that the efficiencies that are brought on by a system that is more streamlined, that doesn't take months for people to have to fight through. By the way, it won't, won't, you, know, you won't have to have as much personnel, presumably, on the insurance side uh, to do this either because we will have streamlined and made it more obvious what the treatment needs to be. It basically needs to follow the same guidelines that your doctor is following. Um, so we believe, and the reason, one of the reasons we're, we're implementing this law is, or trying to get it passed and we'll implement it, is because we believe that it ultimately brings down health care costs for everybody. Governor, this uh, apart from, from this legislation, um, over in Missouri, we have uh, an initiative petition a campaign that's trying to re-enshrine abortion rights. Are you concerned about... The, the status of Illinois' health care system being able to continue to shoulder the, the burden of people who are crossing state lines uh, to seek that service in, in Illinois. When you say concerned, let's start with we stand up for people's rights in the state of Illinois. We believe that this is a right that belongs to every woman uh, and that should be enshrined Frankly, I believe it should be in the U.S. Constitution. It should be something that's guaranteed. We had it when the Supreme Court used to believe in privacy rights, um, and, uh, and we're going to have to fight for it once again. Uh, but uh, I, I will say that when people cross state lines, um, they're not covered by Medicaid in the state of Illinois. If they otherwise, you know, uh, if they have the, the uh, resources to be able to pay for the treatment that they're looking for, uh, we've made it absolutely legal and protected in the state of Illinois, and we've made sure we've increased capacity among the providers, and that means helping to attract uh, personnel, making sure that they've actually got the physical space and so on, because we realize that every state around us has restricted abortion rights and therefore people are going to have to be refugees from their home state in order to just to exercise those rights. So we don't think there, there is enormous cost to the taxpayers of the state of Illinois. In fact, um, the costs that I think you're implying are Medicaid-related costs. We don't cover. Nobody does. It's, 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 it's uh, not something that any state can provide. Yes, sir. Medical debts. Um, well, think about the relief that we're providing for a relatively small amount of money. A billion dollars of medical debt relief for just $10 million. That's one penny on the dollar. And think about what it does for people to have that alleviated from their, not just their credit report, but just their obligations in the world, their debt. Uh, and let's also be clear that a billion dollars of medical, this is debt that is unlikely to be collected because the people who aren't paying it aren't paying it because they're just trying to be uh, scofflaws. Uh, these are folks who genuinely can't afford to pay it off. Um, so the medical debt that we're alleviating are for people who are only up to about four times the uh, poverty, federal, federal poverty rate. Uh, and they're folks that otherwise wouldn't be able to pay it off. So, again, $10 million for a billion dollars of, of medical debt relief, I think, is a pretty good bargain. Again, we're working with folks on the ground to determine um, in every state in which Think Big America, this is an organization that, that I founded a uh, year or two ago, uh, to focus on protecting abortion rights, reproductive health all across the country since we're now having to wage these wars state by state until we're able to get a Congress and a president who can pass a federal law uh, to protect abortion rights. Um, so what we spend in each state is really kind of dependent on what the needs are in that state and haven't determined that for the state of Missouri. Right, thank you.